Hi guys, welcome to Lens City. My name is Daniel, and in this video, I'll be teaching you biology. Today's topic is nutrient cycling in nature. So now I want to define what nutrient cycle is. Nutrient cycle is simply defined as the circulation of certain nutrients, such as carbon, nitrogen, and water in nature. So what that means is, nutrient cycle is just simply talking about how, we, how nutrients are used and reused in nature. So I want to talk about different type of nutrient cycles that we have. So we want to take each cycle, then define them, talk about the processes that are involved in each cycle, and explain them. So let's start with carbon cycle. Carbon cycle is simply the way carbon is moved from the atmosphere to living organisms, then from the living organisms back to the atmosphere. So the carbon that is moved is in form of carbon dioxide. So carbon cycle, you can also say carbon cycle is the way carbon dioxide is being used in the, from the atmosphere by photosynthesis and put back into the atmosphere by respiration and decay. Now the carbon cycle involves these following processes, photosynthesis, respiration, putrefaction, and combustion. Now only photosynthesis removes carbon from the atmosphere. The other three return carbon back to the atmosphere. Now let's talk about the, each of those processes that are involved in carbon cycle. The first one is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, in photosynthesis, the air that contains carbon dioxide that diffuses into the leaves is built up into sugar and other complex compounds. That's the definition of photosynthesis. That's how plants make their food. Now when that plant is eaten by animals, sugar gets into the cells in the animal's body. So that's just talking about the cycle through which the carbon that is used gets into other living organisms. Now let's talk about the next process involved in carbon cycle, which is respiration. Now respiration occurs within an animal. And what happens is the chemical food substance that is created or digested in an animal is broken down, then releases carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Then that carbon dioxide is released to the atmosphere during photosynthesis. Now the next process that is involved in carbon cycle is putrefaction. Now putrefaction is a process that occurs after the death of plants and animals. So when they decay, bacteria and other microbes feed on them. That mode of feeding is called saprophytism. Then this other, this bacteria and these microbes, they respire, therefore giving back carbon dioxide back to the atmosphere. Another process involved in carbon cycle is combustion. Now, what happens during combustion is that burning occurs. So when burning occurs, carbon dioxide is released. So when we burn fuels such as coal, wood, petrol, and kerosene, carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere. So now let's talk about one of the places where carbon dioxide is also gotten, which is from the sea. Now when there is little quantity of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, CO2 is liberated. CO2 is also known as carbon dioxide. It is liberated from the seas. So when there is too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere also, some of the carbon dioxide dissolves into the sea. That's just to maintain the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now let's discuss the importance of carbon or carbon cycle. Now, all living things are made up of carbon components. That's why we say living organisms are carbon-based life forms. So every living organism, both plants and animals, are made up of carbon. Another importance of carbon is that all food components contains carbon. Of course, since living organisms are made up of carbon, also food substances are also made up of carbon. Now, the processes that produces carbon dioxide for the use of photosynthesis is carbon cycle. So before photosynthesis can occur, there must be a carbon cycle. So that's another importance of carbon cycle. Now, another importance of carbon cycle is that it maintains the carbon-oxygen balance in the atmosphere. So what carbon cycle does is it enables the atmosphere to be able to balance the amount of carbon and the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere so that there wouldn't, there wouldn't be poison going into the, any of the living organisms. For example, if there is too much carbon in the atmosphere, that would be toxic to human beings because human beings require more of oxygen. So carbon cycle enables the carbon-oxygen balance to be maintained. Now let's talk about another cycle, which is water cycle. Now water cycle is defined as the way water is being used and returned to the atmosphere in form of water vapor, then it falls back as rain. Now water cycle involves two major processes, which are condensation and evaporation. 
when rain falls, some of it is absorbed by plants through their root hairs. Now, after spending some time in these plants, this water is now evaporated in the process of transpiration. Also, animals drink a lot of water. So those, that water that the animals drink is eventually released. Some of it is released into the environment during respiration and excretion. Now, some rain falls to ponds, streams, and water and rivers. So some of this water is filtered down into the soil and they form underground water. Now, sometimes this underground water is now emptied and returned back to the atmosphere by evaporation. So it's just simply a cycle. The way water comes to the atmosphere, it is returned back into the atmosphere by various processes. So when water vapor accumulates in the, into the atmosphere in the form of cloud, it has reached condensation level. Then that, that water that has accumulated can fall back as rain, come back into the atmosphere, come back into the soil. So water cycle is simply the process of evaporation from oceans, lakes, and streams. So that water goes up into the atmosphere. Transpiration from plants, that water also goes back into the atmosphere. Then groundwater, underground water also, goes up into the atmosphere. Then when that water accumulates in the atmosphere, the water is released back into the soil, into the plants, into the groundwater, into these oceans and streams as precipitation or rainfall. Now, as we're talking about the importance of water cycle, we also want, we have to talk about the importance of water. So water is important to all living organisms, including plants and animals. So let's talk about the importance of water to plants. Now, water cools the plants during the process of transpiration. So during transpiration, that water helps to cool the plants. So another importance of plants is that it serves as an agent of weathering for soil formation. So water helps to break down soil or break down rocks that eventually become soil. So water helps in the process of weathering. Another so another importance of water is that it aids germination of plants. Water helps germination of plants. Another one is that it helps to, to dissolve plant nutrients for easy absorption by plants. Another one is that water is required for photosynthesis to commence. So before photosynthesis can start, water is required. Another importance of water to plants is that it gives plants support and rigidity.